in the new CBS show, The Great Indoors, with the great... Susanna Fielding. Um, I'm also in The Great Indoors playing Brooke, Stephen Fry's daughter. Mm. Although I'm not playing Stephen Fry in this, I'm playing <laughs> someone called Roland. And I run a magazine, because it says here, describe The Great Indoors in one sentence. Is, um, can this be done? Yes, I think it can, yeah. by Stephen Fry. Oh, <laughs> don't say that. It could be a long sentence with many sub-clauses and relative clauses. <laughs> but essentially, it's set in the, a magazine for The Great Outdoors, an mm -hmm. adventure magazine, in which Joel McHale's character uh, is brought in from the cold, uh, from the field, um, to try and run it as a website instead of a magazine because mm. that's the nature of it and he has to work with these millennials who are, who we've got into the office to kind of bring our website bang up to date and help us promote our the the great outdoors I mean, it's a disconnect between people of different generations he's really a i guess a gen, gen xer X, yeah and they're millennials and the, uh, despite the fact there's probably only about five years difference in age, exactly. it's a generation away. But he's been off grid, kind of working out in the middle of nowhere with no phone signal and likes to do things the old school way. And these millennials are super bang up to date, way much more than we are. <laughs> they laugh at him for having a hotmail address and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, so. wanting to read a newspaper. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So, okay. Uh, what was your reaction to the pilot script after you read it? Um, well, I laughed while I was reading it, so that was a really good sign. Mm. Um, and I wanted to be in it, which is a really good sign too. <laughs> ditto, ditto, ditto. It was a no-brainer, really. Yeah. Just loved it from the get-go. Have you anything in common with your character? Uh, yeah, I think you've always got to have a little bit in common mm. with your character. Um, I guess I'm quite sassy. Are Brooke, you sassy? sassy. Oh, my uh, goodness. <laughs> Sassy, eh? Uh, mm. Stephen? No, or very little. My, you know, my, my character is a 17-year-old uh, girl from uh, uh, Sweden. <laughs> so I, it's taking all my acting chops, really, to try and uh, master her. No, I'm afraid it is. Uh, well, I think in, in comedy in particular, you, you, you want to just extend your own character or find bits of your yeah. own character that are similar. Right. And certainly, I am uh, an elderly gentleman. <laughs> and, uh, no, you're not. <laughs> no, I'm not. Thank you. I hoped you'd say that. Yeah, it was no, a little late, but no. still. I mean, in fact, there's a lot of differences because I am actually very tech. I love tech. I he's absolutely he's more tech savvy this. than the rest of us put together, um, actually. And so. so, in that sense, I'm having to invent someone who doesn't know what vinyl periscope are or the difference between them. Mm. Not that we are interested in them because we use Facebook Live. <laughs> yes, so we do. Yes, we do. Where it's at. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry. Um, Susanna, Susanna, can you talk about, A, can you put another N in your name, well, please? Exactly. Can you talk about the chemistry between your character and Joel McHale's? Oh, no. Ooh, Remember, juicy. there may be children tuning in to this uh, <laughs> Facebook live cast. Uh, there's definitely a hint in the pilot that there's a little bit of history there, mm. uh, fueled by a few too many mojitos. And that may happen again in the future, but it may not. We kind of, we, um, we I want to say butt heads, but... Um, you are butt heads. <laughs> No, oh, you butt heads, like goats or, or, or rams. We're like goats. Yeah. That's yeah. the answer to the question. Me and John McHale are both like goats. They're smelly <laughs> and eat anything. Yeah. What's the best part about being on set? That's a good Ooh, question, is isn't it? Oh, is it the food? Well, the food is annoyingly good. Actually, the worst part, because I'm trying to... Yeah, we're lose. all trying to be healthy. Yeah. Um, it's the others. I mean, there's a... I haven't mentioned that the... The three, uh, Christine Coe and, uh, and, and Christopher. Yeah, and Sean and yeah, Christopher, yeah. Who, who, who play the, the three millennials. Uh, they're just wonderful. Susanna's wonderful they as really it happens, are. despite what you've seen just now. <laughs> and, uh, and Joel is a prince, a great man. Yeah. And so we just have a really good time together. Yeah, we're really lucky we all get on like a house on fire. Are you active on social media? I am, now and again, mm. when I feel passionate about something, mm. like the great indoors. And yourself? I'm about to reactivate my Twitter account. I had a Twitter account from very early, but I deactivated it in February and um, thus kissed goodbye to my 13 million followers. But uh, fortunately, the nice people at Twitter have told me that I've kept my oh. followers and, and will do unless unless the deactivation lasts more than a year, you keep your followers because oh, cool. it gives you a chance to change your mind. They so really, be. in order to communicate with the followers about this show, uh, I'm reactivating. Good but news. Uh, yeah. Stephen. What are millennials like in the UK? <laughs> well, much as they are in America. I mean, they're sweet and fluffy and adorable. And you want to just stroke and pet them to some extent. But also there are sort of maddening features. You feel that they just can't pick a book off a bookshelf and read it. That, that, you know, they expect the press 
press the page like that and say, it's not turning, it's not turning, the page isn't turning, what's going on? You know, um, but that's not really true because there are such positives. And the most obvious one, without wishing to sound cheesy or self-righteous, is the inclusivity that it comes naturally to people of that generation. They don't really have an issue with having to have an issue about people's sexuality or gender or assignation or um, and any other of the things that seem to be providing so much difficulty in, in society. Right. So if there, is a, if there is hope for the future, it is that the millennials really just embrace and accept. I think, yeah, and that's, I think that's a side. good direction to be going in. But I wouldn't trust them to sit the right way on a toilet seat. <laughs> um, what's the best generation? I don't think there is a best generation. I know it's going to sound very PC, but we've all got elements of, mm. our, of our generations that are brilliant. I love the fact that my mum's generation really know about stuff and mm. know about history. Like they know enough to say my generation knows about <laughs> stuff because generation is a singular this guy. plural entity. <laughs> but the, the, no, I know in America it's customary to call the generation that fought in the Second World War as the great generation. And obviously that's a very specific generation and we can never come close to the achievements of those people who who fought and saw mm -hmm. their friends die in front of them and had to kill for their country as well as to die for their country. To kill for your country is an appalling sacrifice to ask. And so we will never obviously be able to contemplate what it's like. But I think each generation has fabulous things to offer. Mm -hmm. My generation is the most entitled actually. We call the younger ones and but we just had it all. We had the You were lucky. The you baby could buy bonus. houses, yeah. you could get jobs and, yeah. and pay off your mortgages. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't even need a mortgage, you had so much money. Right, exactly. Not quite true. Yeah. Oh. Well that's it. That's what we've got time that's for. We've gone through the for. questions. Tune in to CBS to watch the Great Indoors. Yeah. Tune in guys. <laughs>